A manual transmission, MT, also known as manual gearbox, standard transmission, in Canada and the United Kingdom, or stick shift, in the United States, is a multi-speed motor vehicle transmission system, where gear changes require the driver to manually select the gears by operating a gear stick and clutch, which is usually a foot pedal for cars or a hand lever for motorcycles. Early automobiles used sliding mesh manual transmissions with up to three forward gear ratios. Since the 1950s, constant mesh manual transmissions have become increasingly commonplace and the number of forward ratios has increased to five-speed and six-speed manual transmissions for current vehicles. The alternative to a manual transmission is an automatic transmission. Common types of automatic transmissions are the hydraulic automatic transmission, eight, and the continuously variable transmission, CVT, whereas the automated manual transmission, AMT, and dual clutch transmission, DCT, are internally similar to a conventional manual transmission, but are shifted automatically. Ultimately, there are transmissions which facilitate manual clutch operation, but the driver's input is still required to manually change gears, namely semi-automatic transmissions. These systems are based on the design of a conventional manual transmission with a gear shifter and are mechanically similar to a conventional manual transmission, with the driver's control and input still required for manually changing gears, like with the standard manual transmission, but the clutch system is completely automated and the mechanical linkage for the clutch pedal is completely replaced by an actuator, servo, or solenoid and sensors, which operate the clutch system automatically when the driver touches or moves the gear shift. This removes the need for a physical clutch pedal. A manual transmission requires the driver to operate the gear stick and clutch in order to change gears, unlike an automatic transmission or semi-automatic transmission, where one, typically the clutch, or both of these functions are automated. Most manual transmissions for cars allow the driver to select any gear ratio at any time, for example, shifting from second to fourth gear or fifth to third gear. However, sequential manual transmissions, which are commonly used in motorcycles and racing cars, only allow the driver to select the next higher or next lower gear. In a vehicle with a manual transmission, the flywheel is attached to the engine's crankshaft, therefore rotating at engine speed. A clutch sits between the flywheel and the transmission input shaft, controlling whether the transmission is connected to the engine, clutch engaged. The clutch pedal is not being pressed or not connected to the engine, clutch disengaged. The clutch pedal is being pressed down. When the engine is running and the clutch is engaged, I clutch pedal up, the flywheel spins the clutch plate and hence the transmission. The design of most manual transmissions for cars is that gear ratios are selected by locking selected gear pairs to the output shaft inside the transmission. This is a fundamental difference compared with the typical hydraulic automatic transmission, which uses an epicyclic planetary design and a hydraulic torque converter. An automatic transmission that allows the driver to control the gear selection, such as shift paddles or plus slash positions on the gear selector, is called a manumatic transmission and is not considered a manual transmission. Some automatic transmissions are based on the mechanical build and internal design of a manual transmission but have added components, such as computer-controlled actuators and sensors, which automatically control the timing and speed of the gear shifts and clutch. This design is typically called an automated manual transmission or sometimes a clutchless manual transmission. Contemporary manual transmissions for cars typically use five or six forward gears ratios and one reverse gear, however, transmissions with between two and seven gears have been produced at times. Transmissions for trucks and other heavy equipment often have between eight and 25 gears in order to keep the engine speed within the optimal power band for all typical road speeds. Operating such transmissions often uses the same pattern of shifter movement with a single or multiple switches to engage the next sequence of gears.
Shaft Sa. A manual transmission has several shafts with various gears and other components attached to them. Most modern passenger cars use constant mesh transmissions, consisting of three shafts. An input shaft, a counter shaft, also called a lay shaft, and an output shaft. The input shaft is connected to the engine and spins at engine speed whenever the clutch is engaged. The counter shaft has gears of various sizes, which are permanently meshed with the corresponding gear on the input shaft. The gears on the output shaft are also permanently meshed with a corresponding gear on the counter shaft. However, the output shaft gears are able to rotate independently of the output shaft itself through the use of bearings located between the gears and the shaft. Through the use of collars, operated using the shift rods, the speed of the output shaft becomes temporarily locked to the speed of the selected gear. Some transmission designs, such as in the Volvo 850 and S70, have two counter shafts, both driving an output pinion meshing with the front-wheel drive transaxle's ring gear. This allows for a narrower transmission, since the length of each counter shaft is half compared with one that contains four gears and two shifters. The fixed and free gears can be mounted on either the input or output shaft, or both. For example, a 5-speed transmission might have the 1st to 2nd selectors on the counter shaft, but the 3rd to 4th selector and the 5th selector on the main shaft. This means that when the vehicle is stopped and idling in neutral with the clutch engaged and the input shaft spinning, the 3rd, 4th, and 5th gear pairs do not rotate. When neutral is selected, none of the gears on the output shaft are locked to the shaft, allowing the input and output shafts to rotate independently. For reverse gear, an idler gear is used to reverse the direction in which the output shaft rotates. In many transmissions, the input and output shafts can be directly locked together by passing the counter shaft to create a one-to-one -one gear ratio, which is referred to as direct drive. In a transmission for longitudinal engined vehicles, like most rear-wheel drive cars, it is common for the input shaft and output shaft to be located on the same axis, since this reduces the torsional forces to which the transmission casing must withstand. The assembly consisting of both the input and output shafts is referred to as the main shaft, although sometimes this term refers to just the input shaft or output shaft. Independent rotation of the input and output shafts is made possibly by one shaft being located inside the hollow bore of the other shaft, with a bearing located between the two shafts. In a transmission for transverse engine vehicles, egg front-wheel drive cars, there are usually only two shafts, input and counter shaft, sometimes called input and output. The input shaft runs the whole length of the gearbox, and there is no separate input pinion. These transmissions also have an integral differential unit, which is connected via a pinion gear at the end of the counter slash output shaft. Dog Clutch in a modern constant mesh manual transmission, the gear teeth are permanently in contact with each other, and dog clutches, sometimes called dog teeth, are used to select the gear ratio for the transmission. When the dog clutches for all gears are disengaged, when the transmission is in neutral, all of the gears are able to spin freely around the output shaft. When the driver selects a gear, the dog clutch for that gear is engaged via the gear selector rods locking the transmission's output shaft to a particular gear set. This means the output shaft rotates at the same speed as the selected gear, thus determining the gear ratio of the transmission. The dog clutch is a sliding selector mechanism that sits around the output shaft. It has teeth to fit into the splines on the shaft, forcing that shaft to rotate at the same speed as the gear hub. However, the clutch can move back and forth on the shaft, to either engage or disengage the splines. This movement is controlled by a selector fork that is linked to the gear lever. The fork does not rotate, so it is attached to a collar bearing on the selector. The selector is typically symmetric. It slides between two gears and has a synchronge and teeth on each side in order to lock either gear to the shaft. 
unlike some other types of clutches, such as the foot-operated clutch of a manual transmission car. A dog clutch provides non-slip coupling and is not suited to intentional slipping. Synchromesh In order to provide smooth gear shifts without requiring the driver to manually match the engine revs for each gear shift, most modern passenger car transmissions use synchromesh, also called synchronizer rings, on the forward gears. These devices automatically match the speed of the input shaft with that of the gear being selected, thus removing the need for the driver to use techniques such as double clutching. The synchromesh transmission was invented in 1919 by Earl Avery Thompson and first used on production cars by Cadillac in 1928. The need for synchromesh in a constant mesh transmission is that the dog clutches require the input shaft speed to match that of the gear being selected. Otherwise, the dog teeth will fail to engage and a loud grinding sound will be heard as they clatter together. Therefore, to speed up or slow down the input shaft as required, cone-shaped brass synchronizer rings are attached to each gear. When the driver moves the gear shift lever towards the next gear, these synchronizer rings press on the cone-shaped sleeve on the dog collar so that the friction forces can reduce the difference in rotational speeds. Once these speeds are equalized, the dog clutch can engage, and thus the new gear is now in use. In a modern gearbox, the action of all of these components is so smooth and fast it is hardly noticed. Many transmissions do not include synchromesh on the reverse gear, see reverse gear section below. The synchromesh system must also prevent the collar from bridging the locking rings while the speeds are still being synchronized. This is achieved through blocker rings, also called bulk rings. The synchro ring rotates slightly because of the frictional torque from the cone clutch. In this position, the dog clutch is prevented from engaging. Once the speeds are synchronized, friction on the blocker ring is relieved and the blocker ring twists slightly, bringing into alignment certain grooves or notches that allow the dog clutch to fall into the engagement. Common metals for synchronizer rings are brass and steel and are produced either by forging or sheet metal shaping. The latter involves stamping the piece out of a sheet metal strip and then machining to obtain the exact shape required. The rings are sometimes coated with anti-wear linings, also called friction linings, made from molybdenum, iron, bronze, or carbon, with the latter usually reserved for high-performance transmissions due to their high cost. Mechanical wear of the synchronizer rings and sleeves can cause the synchromesh system to become ineffective over time. These rings and sleeves have to overcome the momentum of the entire input shaft and clutch disc during each gear shift, and also the momentum and power of the engine if the driver attempts a gear shift without fully disengaging the clutch. Larger differences in speed between the input shaft and the gear require higher friction forces from the synchromesh components, potentially increasing their wear rate. Common metals for synchronizer rings are brass and steel and are produced either by forging or sheet metal shaping. The latter involves stamping the piece out of a sheet metal strip and then machining to obtain the exact shape required. The rings are sometimes coated with anti-wear linings, also called friction linings, made from molybdenum, iron, bronze, or carbon, with the latter usually reserved for high-performance transmissions due to their high cost. Mechanical wear of the synchronizer rings and sleeves can cause the synchromesh system to become ineffective over time. These rings and sleeves have to overcome the momentum of the entire input shaft and clutch disc during each gear shift, and also the momentum and power of the engine if the driver attempts a gear shift without fully disengaging the clutch. Larger differences in speed between the input shaft and the gear require higher friction forces from the synchromesh components, potentially increasing their wear rate. Reverse gear. 
Even in modern transmissions, where all of the forward gears are in a constant mesh configuration, often the reverse gear uses the older sliding mesh, crash box, configuration. This means that moving the gear shift lever into reverse results in gears moving to mesh together. Another unique aspect of the reverse gear is that it consists of two gears, an idler gear on the counter shaft and another gear on the output shaft, and both of these are directly fixed to the shaft, i they are always rotating at the same speed as the shaft. These gears are usually spur gears with straight cut teeth, which, unlike the helical teeth used for forward gear, result in a whining sound as the vehicle moves in reverse. When reverse gear is selected, the idler gear is physically moved to mesh with the corresponding gears on the input and output shafts. To avoid grinding as the gears begin to the mesh, they need to be stationary. Since the input shaft is often still spinning due to momentum, even after the car has stopped. A mechanism is needed to stop the input shaft, such as using the synchronizer rings for fifth gear. However, some vehicles do employ a synchronge system for the reverse gear, thus preventing possible crunching if reverse gear is selected while the input shaft is still spinning. Most transmissions include a lockout mechanism to prevent reverse gear from being accidentally selected while the car is moving forwards. This can take the form of a collar underneath the gear knob, which needs to be lifted or requiring extra force to push the gearshift lever into the plane of reverse gear.